Shalom, and welcome to another edition of My Brother's Keeper, uh, where we look at the challenges facing Christians in the Middle East today, especially the church in a, in a majority uh, religion land where they are the minority. Today's subject is going to be the church in modern Turkey, and uh, we have a very special guest with us, uh, Suner Tufan, who is the head of the Shema, CEO of Shema Media Group, and also is the spokesperson for the Turkish Protestant Churches Association. Soner, thank you for joining us today. Thank you. Yeah. We're going to begin, as we always do on My Brother's Keeper, by looking at the Scripture. And one of the reasons we look at the Scripture today is because many of, much of what we see in the New Covenant, the New Testament, happened in what is today Turkey. But one of the most, uh, one of my favorite books, and one of the books that kind of speaks most clearly about Paul's work in that area is the book of Ephesus, Ephesians. Um, and right now, I want to just read from Ephesians chapter 4 and, uh, and verse 1. I could read many different places, but one of the most in, in, in sort of interesting and, and I believe one of the most uh, you know, incredible things about Paul's writing and his work is that many, much of it was done while he was under persecution, and yet the Lord used all that to further the testimony and the, um, just the furtherance of the gospel of the kingdom in that land. So in chapter 4 and verse 1, he says, Therefore I, a prisoner of the Lord, beg you to lead a life worthy of your calling. For you have been called by God. Always be humble and gentle. Be patient with each other, making allowance for each other's faults because, you, because of your love. Make every effort to keep yourselves united in the Spirit, binding yourselves together with peace. For there is one body and one Spirit, just as you've been called to one glorious hope for the future. There is one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father who is over all and in all and living through all. You know, the, as Paul's writing, one of the things that I always am, am caught with is that his sense of connection with the body in different places. Here he's a prisoner, but yet he's somewhere else. He's writing to the Ephesians, but he's talking about this unity that exists all over the region. And that's one of our main things that we talk about is how can we at My Brother's Keeper, create a sense of responsibility for Christians in other parts of the world for the church in the Middle East. So, Sonar, as we spoke about, let, well, let's just pray before we begin. Father, we thank well, you for this opportunity to, uh, to look into the church in Turkey today. We thank you for its rich history, but Lord, we thank you as well for its present situation and Lord, for its future. And uh, Lord, we ask you right now to lead and guide our discussion uh, the, our time in uh, looking at these scriptures and even, Lord, how we can stand in the nations, in different parts of the Middle East, in different parts of the world, with the church in Turkey. So, Sona, the land of Turkey is the setting, as we just spoke about, for much of what happens in the New Covenant. Not only in the New Covenant, but in the whole Bible. Uh, there's, a lot of different, there's a lot of different events. There's a lot of different things that happen. It's rich in biblical history. And, you know, actually, it's more rich in biblical archaeology than even the land of Israel. Uh, there's so much there that's even kind of yet to be discovered, and it's quite a, an exciting place to visit, which I hope, you know, people will take that opportunity. Share a few of your, with our viewers some of the places that, and events that you enjoy or you visited in Turkey that have really kind of shaped your life and faith. Yes, thank you. Turkey is a Bible land, uh, we can say, uh, after uh, Israel, uh, from the beginning to uh, in, uh, yeah, Till uh, Jesus Christ uh, history, we can see in many places. For example, uh, Noah's Ark uh, is in Turkey. Uh, seven churches, like you, uh, yeah, read uh, the verses from Ephesians. Uh, seven churches uh, mm -hmm. in Turkey, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, there are many other places like Abraham's well. Uh, right. St. Paul's uh, homeland, yep. and uh, we can say many, many places uh, right. we have right. in Turkey. Right. Uh, that's why we really would like to uh, present and invite people to come to Turkey. Mm -hmm. uh, also, while uh, doing this, we also want to learn uh, from other people. 
Right. Yeah, no, I mean, you, you spoke about all the way from Mount Ararat in the, in the east of Turkey yeah. to Ephesians in the west to Tarsus, the hometown of Paul in Turkey. I mean, most yeah. of the book of Acts actually takes place in, in Turkey itself. And a lot of yes. Paul's life and growing up was in the land of what is today Turkey. So it's rich in biblical yeah. history. Even the, uh, what mo- many people don't know is Antioch. Uh, ancient Antioch was actually in today's Turkey as well. Uh, Antioch of Syria. Yeah, Christians first called uh, as uh, Christian. Also, uh, we uh, I think we will have a radio station in Antioch, mm. and uh, we will, yeah, uh, right. start broadcasting uh, Christian uh, Bible uh, gospel uh, oh. to the people uh, mm. in Antioch. Yeah, exciting! Wow, that's great. I mean, there's also it's a land of many different peoples even today. Uh, you know, Turkey's been the home to a huge refugee population as well that's come over from Syria, come from Iraq, from Iran. I mean, the, the country is very diverse in many ways. Tell us about your story. Uh, you know, how did you grow up? What, you know, tell us about your own personal testimony and story and how you found Yeshua, yeah, no, how he found you. Uh, I, uh, I'm uh, 53 years old and uh, more than 35 years ago, I met with a Korean brother. He was teaching me Taekwondo. Oh. Uh, he uh, was Christian. Uh, I saw a Bible in his house. Also, I uh, observed his family life was different than ours. Mm-hmm. That's why uh, I asked him. Uh, and then we start talking about the religion. And then I learned that he is Christian. Mm-hmm. And uh, I borrowed uh, his um, Bible, mm-hmm. and then I start uh, reading. Before that, I was not uh, very religious, or I was not radical religious person. But mm-hmm. uh, after I start reading the Bible, I became more religious uh, mm-hmm. person. I was ex-Muslim, and then uh, I did a lot of research. Uh, mm-hmm. talk to the people, uh, mm-hmm. learn more from different sources. Okay. But finally, I understood that if there is God, God is in uh, in the Bible, in Christianity. And uh, I was not happy. I had nothing in my life as a target, as a mm-hmm. meaning. Mm-hmm. There was no meaning in my life. Mm. But uh, when I read Bible, all the time I saw uh, God's love, mm. God's finger, uh, yeah, His patience. I saw uh, in many uh, many parts of scriptures. Mm. But it was difficult because uh, at that time in Turkey, maybe fifty Christians were living uh, wow. as Turkish uh, citizens, and I never met any of them. Mm. Uh, I was afraid if I became Christian, what is going to be happen to me? Mm. Uh, Just right here, yeah. tell us a little bit about the makeup of modern Turkey. I mean, I, maybe many of our viewers don't know. It's actually, you know, an, uh, quite an important country, quite a large country, very strategically placed. But give us some little bit of the, the modern nation of Turkey. Okay, we all know about the Ottoman Empire, but let's about the modern nation of Turkey, maybe just... You know, how, how many people, how, what, what's the population makeup of Christians and Muslims and things? Yes, yes. In Turkey, 85 million people live. Mm-hmm. Maybe we have more because we don't have any idea about how many refugees we have. Right. Uh, Turkey is a republic, uh, mm-hmm. co- uh, republic uh, country. Mm-hmm. Uh, 85 million people, maybe more, but we have only... Uh, six or seven uh, thousand Christians in Turkey. Wow. It's very, very small amount of Christians in Turkey. Maybe okay. uh, 0.006 percent uh, of the population uh, are Christian. Wow. So when you came to faith in the God of the Bible and in Jesus Christ, you did not know an, another Turkish Christian like yourself? No, no. Uh, okay. That was understandable because uh, there was a Korean person, 
Uh -huh. He was my teacher. Uh, yeah, at that time there were some Turkish Christians in uh -huh. Ankara that okay. uh, where I live, uh, but I, I didn't met them, and it was really interesting because uh, I was thinking that I'm the first, I will be fir first uh, converted Christian uh, in Turkey, uh -huh. uh, but I was very unhappy. Mm. I had nothing in my life, uh, but at the same time, I saw that God is real, mm. and He explained Himself in Jesus Christ, and the message was very solid, message was very understandable, and mm. very logical. Uh -huh. Oh, that's very good. So how did your family react to this decision? I mean, you were, you said you were you 16 or you were actually a little bit older at this time? You were in your early 20s? Yes. Uh, I was, uh, I was 17 years old. Okay. Uh, I became Christian. Uh -huh. And then the uh, first day I told to my family and the first day my uh, older brothers uh was very angry and mm. uh, he broke my nose oh uh, wow because of i became christian oh. but praise god uh, two years later he became christian now oh. he is uh, pastoring in the <laughs> egypt part of turkey uh -huh. uh, yeah now Amazing. he loves god he mm. pastoring he let uh, hundreds of hundreds of people to Jesus Christ. But wow. at the beginning, it was difficult. <laughs> no, it sounds like it. Listen, you've, you've come from a, you know, a long journey, and uh, now part of your role, uh, you shared with me, is a spokesperson for the, the Turkish Protestant Churches uh, Association. Now, give us a little history about, it's not a very old organization, it's actually quite new, if I'm not uh, mistaken. Is that correct? Yeah. Our Christian history is more than 2,000 years in Turkey. Amazing. Uh, all the time you can see the Christians in Turkey. Praise God, we have more Christians than, than before. Uh, when the church uh, are growing, uh, we thought that we need to keep our uh, unity. That's why we started this um, uh, Turkish Protestant Alliance. Mm -hmm. Now, 85% of the population, Christian population, represent in this alliance. Okay. And uh, more than 15 years, I'm spokesperson uh, for mm. the alliance. Also, mm. uh, for five years, I'm a board member for the mm -hmm. for the alliance. Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. I also try to be, <clears throat> uh, I also try to uh, be a good human rights activities mm -hmm. For the Christians and for the other minority groups. Okay. What are some of the biggest challenges facing as a spokesperson, as someone who knows kind of the whole situation all over the country? What are some of the biggest challenges and how can people stand with the church in Turkey at this time? Uh, you know, in Turkey, the political situation, uh, political uh, atmosphere is really affecting uh, mm. our church. Okay. Uh, our, uh, our brothers and sisters in uh, Turkey. That's why uh, please pray uh, for this sustainability, mm -hmm. uh, sustainable system in, uh, in Turkey. Also, mm -hmm. uh, there are many privileges about Christianity, about Christians. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, they are teaching Christianity is uh, uh, Chris, Chris, Christians are believing a changeable uh, Bible. Bible has right. changed. Mm -hmm. uh, they believe in three gods, and there are many uh, privileges about uh, Ma the many mi many misconceptions. They, yes, they think that Christians are not uh, trustful people. That's why, please pray that uh, we can present ourselves well. Uh, mm. Yeah. Also, we need uh, your prayer about protection. All mm -hmm. the time, uh, we are like a target for every different um, people, like nationalists, right? like uh, radical people. Mm. Time to time, uh, mm -hmm. there is a right. difficulty from left side, even left side, 
uh, parties thinks that we are uh, like a threat uh, okay. for the comp for for the country. For the That's country. why in every aspect of life we really need uh, your prayer. Mm -hmm. uh, also, please pray for the country because politically uh, it's not stable, mm -hmm. and uh, there are too much um, fight mm -hmm. uh, divisions because A lot of, of yeah. uh, these political uh, change changes. Right. So talk about that. Excellent. That's a great thing to remember because it, it is a very, I mean, I don't think it's only Turkey, but we see this in many different nations of the Middle East and not only in the Middle East, but in the world, there's a lot of divisions in nations. And oftentimes the, the church can be the target, uh, you know, of the, uh, of these different groups. Um, t talk to us a little, how did you get involved in the Shema media group? How did that begin? Uh, it's very interesting to me because Turkey has a very rich history in the arts, in media, and uh, it's it's actually it's a uh, it's programs are watched all over the Middle East. It's music. It's uh, it, it, you know it's it's programs. It's movies. It's all very well known. I mean, uh, this was kind of an interesting thing for me to hear that there was actually a, a media group uh, that is actually you know sharing the gospel and, and and broadcasting throughout Turkey. How did this start? Twenty two years ago, uh, we started. Uh this ministry, uh, media ministry. Uh, yeah, one person came to Christ. He, uh, he was a radio guy. And he uh -huh. said, why, uh, we, why don't we don't have radio station? He just asked a question. And then we start thinking, and we saw that, yes, we need to have our media. And then we start praying, talking with the people uh, to, uh, through uh, church. Uh, our church, we started the first radio station, and we saw that uh, there, there is uh, nothing uh, to broadcast in our radio station. That's why we just started to produce uh, Christian uh, content, Christian songs, and okay. other kind of things. And then we saw that if there's a, a radio station in, in a city, God is using that radio, Christian radio station for reaching people. And then uh, God is really changing the atmosphere. That's why we would like to have more radio station in different uh, cities. Also, we, we would like to supply uh, the radio station with social media, with uh, digital broadcasting, with mm. websites and mm. other kind of new media techniques. And then we started to buy new radio stations in different cities. Now uh, we have six radio stations in uh, six right. radio stations in uh, Turkey, and uh, we want to have another radio station in mm -hmm. uh, Northern Cyprus. Mm -hmm. uh, also, we would like to have national uh, radio station in Turkey. Yeah. At the mm -hmm. same time, we do a lot of uh, production for mm -hmm. two TV channels. Mm -hmm. uh, we do those uh, short films, uh, wow. dubbing, Very good. and wow. any other. That's why we say Shema Media Group would like to be part of the ministry to reach people in Turkey. Now, what you said also is very... Outside of Turkey. Right. Now, what you said is interesting, yes, because, uh, you know, there are Turkish speakers outside of Turkey that you're reaching as well through the radio ministry, probably more on Internet. But you started actually on AM radio if I'm, or FM radio, if I'm not correct, if I'm not mistaken. You actually have yes. you actually have radio stations that people can listen to in their home. They don't need an Internet on their ra in the radio, in the car, I everywhere you go. You actually went on the mainstream media right from the beginning. Yes, yes. In Turkey, uh, all of our radio stations, uh, FM radio stations, uh, six FM radio stations we have in Turkey. Wow. Uh, we can reach at least 20 million people. Wow, uh, amazing. Through our FM radio stations. Now, I don't the think there's time. anything, I don't think there's anything like that anywhere else in the Middle East, if I'm not mistaken. In other words, I think Turkey is one of the few countries uh, that has a Christian presence on, you know, mainstream media and on the radio. And this is quite something. What's been the reaction to your, your broadcasting? Because it's quite, yeah, <laughs> because it's, it's a bold yes, step. Uh, <laughs> it's different, different kind of reaction we face. Uh, 
First, praise God. We have right to have Christian radio station in okay. Turkey. Uh, but uh, we know that the uh, Christians uh, face many difficulties. Uh, for example, uh, we know that they observe uh, our signals uh, very, very uh, closely, uh, carefully. And mm -hmm. uh, yeah, time to time, uh, they ask a lot of questions uh, about our broadcastings, our wow. financial situation. Uh, uh -huh. Second, uh, from the uh, from the society, uh, mm -hmm. generally, they say that this is uh, Islamic country. How can you uh, do these uh, programs, they say. Uh, sometimes uh, they try to cut uh, or stop our broadcasting. Mm -hmm. uh, and, for example, uh, once we, w w uh, we were broadcasting Bible verses on the on the radio and then they uh -huh. said uh, this is forbidden for you mm -hmm. uh, they uh, wow. closed our radio station and uh -huh. uh, they said your signal is affecting our aircraft that's why <laughs> we close it but I we want to uh, we, we invite many expertise uh, uh, they did uh. the research, and there is no correlation between no uh, uh, yeah. airline uh, airline protection. control and yeah. yeah. Uh, there there is no affection of aircraft uh, and other kind of things. But very interesting. Uh, finally, praise God, mm -hmm. they mm -hmm. opened the radio the waves again. Uh, How? They yeah. really would like to cancel our signal because of uh, they think that we are threats. Uh, for the, to the for society, the but nowadays, uh, uh, yeah, we don't have that much uh, dramatically uh, difficulties. But we know that all the time uh, they observe us. But mostly from the society, uh, they don't want to accept that there are Christians in Turkey. They have right to live, and they mm -hmm. have right to share their believe their faith with the others i wow, think excellent we really need to pray uh, for these kind of things mm -hmm. uh, also they really try to stop uh, uh, some years ago isis sent me a, a threatening letter and mm -hmm. they say you deserve to die uh, wow. because of you try to reach people mm -hmm. uh, yeah from every part every of the society uh, people we right. face difficulties. You face threats. Yeah, no, I mean, it's interesting that you guys have, you have been able to continue this. How can, I just have a kind of, we don't have a lot of time left, but how can people in other nations stand with you? I know they can pray. Uh, we actually talked about something in the beginning, you know, just coming to visit. But, you know, Turkey is actually has laws that guarantee religious freedom. They have some of the freest uh, laws of religious freedom around the Middle East. Uh, but anyway, how can people stand with Shema Media and the church in Turkey? What can they do practically? Yeah, practically, uh, they can reach us. Mm -hmm. uh, they can, yeah, praying is good, but after praying, if they uh, would like to uh, reach us, encourage us, mm -hmm. co uh, make connection with us, right. would be better. Right, uh, so also, you're on, you're on the... You're... They can do, practically, they can do many things. They can mm -hmm. be part of the ministry. Uh, they can donate uh, mm -hmm. uh, their the money uh, because we have different ways to uh, get donations mm -hmm. uh, through uh, uh, associations in different associations uh, mm -hmm. for this ministry. Uh, mm -hmm. Also, they can share their uh, ideas. They can, mm -hmm. yeah. We yeah. we need yeah we want to feel that we are not uh, alone. alone. Yes, very good. Okay, that's part of the, one of the main purposes of the program. We don't have a lot of time left, but I'd love for you to just pray those things out because oftentimes when we pray, I mean maybe just a short prayer, just helping people to know how they can pray and stand with the church and these ministries in Turkey. Okay. Lord, thank you for this opportunity, uh, for mm. this program. Uh, I pray that uh, everyone who uh, watched this program uh, 
is remind us and let them pray for us, uh, mm. contact with us, encourage mm. us, and Amen. we pray for the nation of Turkey. Mm. Uh, we want to be light of uh, your word. Uh, mm. We want to be good uh, example, good testimony uh, for the people. Uh, thank you for this opportunity. We want mm. to feel the uh, family uh, as mm. a family, and we want to feel that we are not lonely. Thank Amen. you for this opportunity. Opportunity in Jesus' name. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Soner, thank you for joining us on My Brother's Keeper. It's been very interesting. We want to thank you as well, those who are uh, who are faithful viewers of My Brother's Keeper. I'm Michael Karam, and Shalom once again from Jerusalem. God said that my house shall be called a house of prayer for all nations, and we believe in the power of prayer. Many people shall come and say, Come, and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob. He will teach us his ways, and we shall walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth the law, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. Even them I will bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices will be accepted on my altar. My house shall be called a house of prayer for all nations. For more of TV7's productions and editorials, we invite you to visit our website at www.tv7israelnews.com.